Hey, mullet. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. I'm gonna show you the right way to freeze catfish bait. Starts with salt. Now that is pull salt. This part is never precise. I made my salt slurry with about four of these. I had water in the chest and I put about four of these in there. Now I use pull salt to make a salt slurry because it is cheaper than table salt. I can buy a big bag and it lasts me a while. So basically in here, I started with, we'll say a 20 pound bag of melted ice, that much water, right? And then I added about four of those yogurt things, about four quarts of salt. Basically add the salt to the amount of little bit of water you have in there till the water feels slippery, till it's really, really salty, then add your ice. You're not always gonna have as much water as I started with or as much ice, but basically you need this to be salty. Hear that? Now, that's why you wanna do it. So what happens is when you add salt to ice and water, it drops the temperature down of the ice down below freezing. And when you put these fish in here, it flash freezes them locking in the freshness to where you can stay out where you're at catching the bait for a good while fishing putting this bait in here you know this is like a yeti and then when you get back to the house they're still locked in the freshness is locked in and you can vacuum pack them to vacuum pack them you can get a food saver like this one this one is a mueller it's a good brand i bought this a good while ago off of amazon you can also get a special type of Ziploc bag that comes with a, a little pump, a little hand pump thing to where you can vacuum pack them in the Ziploc bag. But I prefer to use this and I get a roll of these. Now, when you go to buy these rolls, be careful buying the cheapest ones because they don't hold their seal very well. You want to make sure you're not getting uh, garbage. I actually caught these today out where I was yesterday. I didn't film catching these because it was raining and I had very little time to do it. So I ended up with 19 mullet, most of them this size. So we're gonna pull out two of these. Get a big one. Got the red carpet situation going here. And why is that? That's because you want these to be dry when you vacuum pack them and throw them in the freezer. The wetter they are, the more ice crystals can form on the outside and that will degrade the flesh. The idea here is to further lock in the freshness when you vacuum pack them. So you want to make sure they're dry on the outside. A lot of guys will lay down a bunch of paper towels and set them on the towels and pat them dry. I just use a towel. It's because I'm not married. Not yet. Make sure these are nice and dry. You want to avoid freezer burn. That's what degrades it. <clears throat> you, these are going to work best if they are fresh when they thaw and not freezer burned and they'll go really soft if you just throw them in the freezer without doing this so what we're doing here is we want to put this down like this to the fish to where we know what we want to cut we got a good idea here we're going to take these scissors and you want to cut a straight line If I had a piece of plywood, I would just bring out a straight razor, but I do not want to do that on this kitchen counter. There we go. You want it straight because if it's a really weird angle, it's not going to fit in here properly. So both sides are not sealed. So we need to seal one side. I'm going to lock that down and we're just going to hit seal here. It's heat sealing it. As soon as that is off, we'll wait a few seconds. And you can see the line here where it's sealed. I'm only going to vacuum pack two big ones at a time here. I want to make sure that you don't have any of the fins sticking up because it is possible if they're in there in a weird way that when it 
vacuum seals that they could poke through and make a hole and you don't want that and that looks fine right there actually you know what i wanted to say was these two mullet right here is probably more than enough for me myself to do one session i might be able to get two sessions out of that but i'm going to do two at a time since they're dry i have this on the dry setting there are different settings on my food saver one thing I got to point out with most food savers, there is this little tube sticking up. You don't want your plastic to be on top of it. That's what is going to suck the air out of the bag. Now we're going to hit vacuum seal. there we go that should stay tight like that in the freezer and when I thaw it out it could be several months from now they'll be just as fresh as when I caught them all right I'm gonna just sit here and do all of these tonight now I find that when you freeze these any other way like you just put them in a ziploc bag or a grocery bag and you throw them in the freezer I find that when you thaw it, the meat is going to be soft and brown and not stay on the hook very long and not do very well as far as catching a lot of fish. This is my favorite way and I believe it to be the right way. You can do this method with any kind of bait fish. Gizzard shad, threadfin shad, skipjack, any kind of pan fish you want to put up if it's legal to fish with gills and stuff like that where you're at sometimes these fish will flash freeze with their fins sticking out you can always just do this when you're vacuum sealing your fish and it doesn't come tight like this and it just keeps running that's because there's a problem with your seal if your seal isn't sealed all the way it's never going to stop sucking because it's taking air in right here but we got that successful there's a nice big one right there we're going to catch a tank with that i wanted to point out that you don't have to buy these rolls it's just what i do because it's cheaper to buy things in bulk for me now they do sell bags that'll be sealed on one side and open on the other but i like to make my own sizes that's the thing about buying these you can make these as long as you want that's the last big one doing that by itself it's pretty important when you cut these bags that you have a good distance from the end to the tail and from the nose to the end if you're too close it can cause problems you want about an inch and a half to two inches personally i don't always pay attention to this but i try to it's more of a problem with where the head is if the head is too close to the seal here when it goes tight if there's something holding this up high here it can pull on the seal and ruin it. So you want enough space to where it'll go flat here where the seal is. There it goes. That's what you're looking for. This is what you're looking for, but this looks kind of strange how it vacuum sealed or how it sucked it out. Look, it got these weird creases here, but that's fine. That'll work. Everything I have left are small. And I wasn't intending to keep mullet these small but i decided to keep these because i'm going to fish with them right now not in this video but very soon i'm kind of waiting for the weather to clear up a little better so there are eight here i think i will vacuum pack half of them and 
put the other half in the refrigerator. Once again, there's way too much stuff in this freezer. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.